when we looked at the photoelectric effect, that was an example of ionizing radiation, which means or requires photons with a very high amount of energy. And so typically these would be way past the visible spectrum, very short wavelength, high frequency, and uh, typically uh, dangerous. In this case, though, we wanted to take a look at a different level of interaction between light and matter. So in this case, we want to in particular take a look at the hydrogen atom and how its electron, singular, because it's hydrogen, only one electron, how its electron interacts with incoming light. So we know that light is quantized, and we also know that energy levels for the hydrogen atom's electron are quantized. So interactions are possible, but only when that quantification matches up. So what we're taking a look at right now is what experimental evidence looks like. Our black box with a question mark represents our box of hydrogen. And light is coming in and, and uh, hitting it and occasionally interacting. So the light that happens outside the box is pretty much noise. But what we really want to look at are, is the light that's going into the box. And then what comes out? And you can see if we just take a look occasionally, we'll see particles of light exit at different angles. Now the purple little bubbles, uh, that's ultraviolet light and the rest is in color. Down here in the spectrometer, we can track how many photons are emitted based on their wavelength. So it's essentially a bar graph. So let's start that counting and see what happens. <clears throat> so when there's an event, when there's a photon that gets absorbed by the black box, then we see we get light out. Now, so far, the light that we got out was a dark blue and a light blue or almost cyan color. We also see a number of uh, UV ultraviolet um, photons being ejected. But in real time, it wouldn't look like this. We wouldn't, this would all be happening so fast we couldn't uh, just watch it. So what we can do is increase the speed. And then really what would happen is that uh, this should be the hydrogen spectra. That means that when we um, stimulate hydrogen and we look at the kind of light it produces, then these lines should match up with the hydrogen spectra. So we can see that we've got very strong UV, we've got a deep blue, almost violet, another dark blue, cyan, red, and then some uh, infrareds. So how do you explain this? What kind of model is gonna predict that? So I'm gonna stop this. And then take a look at predictions. <clears throat> and you can see we have a list on the left-hand side of early models of the atom, billiard ball, plum pudding, classical solar system. None of these work. Uh, the Bohr model, though, that's where things do start to work. So let's take a look at what's happening with the Bohr model. Right now, our electron is in n equals 1, and is called uh, the principal quantum number. So it refers to an orbit level. And here are the other possibilities, n equals 2, 3, 4, and so on. Each of them has a different associated energy. Now, don't forget that our electron is in the bound state. It has a negative energy at negative 13.6 electron volts. And if it's going to rise up in a level, it needs to gain energy. If it actually gets 13.6 electron volts, if it's hit by a photon that's carrying that much energy, it'll be ionized. It'll, it'll go all the way out. But if it's less than 13.6 electron volts, then you're gonna see lots of transitions between the ground state and any of these excited states. So it'll jump up. If the quantum coming in matches an energy level that it's available, then it's gonna absorb that photon. And right now the energy from the ground state, the energy uh, jumps that are possible are n equals one to n equals two, or n equals one to n equals three, 
and so on, but all of these are well into the ultraviolet range. So let's run this. So trying to look closely at the levels, it's a little bit easier because the electron is just a little blue dot in this diagram, but it's easier to pay attention to what happens over here. <clears throat> You can see that all the energy transitions <clears throat> are pretty big because the jump from n equals one to n equals two is so big, then that means really all the rest of them are gonna be on the same order of magnitude. So in terms of the kind of photons that are being absorbed, they're all gonna be on the order of this ultraviolet jump. If they have more energy, then they might match up with one of these levels as well. But it's actually pretty unlikely that the electron is going to jump from n equals 2 to n equals 3 because the wavelength would have to be just right and also the electron would have to be in n equals 2, which is not likely. It's most likely to be in the ground state. Now to take a look at some other models, the, the Broglie model shows the energy levels of standing waves. n equals 1 is the sim simplest. And then finally, we can take a look at the Schrodinger model. And then that shows us the orbital shapes that we're accustomed for chemistry. Okay, well, thank you. That's a really quick overview of a model that explains the atomic spectra of hydrogen. <clears throat>